You know what that means. It's game time. Keep your eyes on the prize. White has exercised her option of advancing the pawn two squares. As already pointed out, this is the most popular opening move and particularly suited for the needs of beginners as it opens up lines for the other pieces. Black has exercised her option of moving the pawn one square. This combination of opening moves is called the French defense and it usually indicates a rather conservative policy. Now white advances her queen's pawn two squares as well. Now both of her bishops have free diagonals, an easy, spacious development. Good job, white. Black, on the other hand, may have trouble bringing out her queen's bishop unless her obstructing king's pawn is moved. Black follows suit. She challenges the position of the white's king's pawn which must now advance, exchange, or be protected. Which is it to be? White has decided to protect her king's pawn. That is, if black captures the pawn, white recaptures with the knight. White's last move is a good one. She parries a threat by bringing out a piece. Then black takes her Queen's bishop's pawn and advances it two squares, but this is not the best. Black is neglecting to develop her pieces. Always remember, develop your pieces. White wastes no time in taking the black pawn. And black will have to recapture in order to maintain material equality. She could recapture with her queen, but would that be a good idea? Keep in mind, White's knight is keeping an eye on that square. And so Black recaptures with her king's pawn. That is the right move. The forces are now still equal. And now White takes Black's pawn. Studying the diagram, we can see White's idea now. If Black's bishop takes White's pawn, then White can win Black's queen's pawn. But Black is wary. He sees his queen's pawn is attacked twice, both by White's queen and knight, and defended only once by the queen. He therefore develops his king's knight to lend additional support. Now White takes her queen's bishop out and black responds by taking her king's bishop out. This is a good developing move, but regaining the pawn would be even simpler and more effective since the pawn is already guarding the knight. Now the white bishop takes the knight. As you can see here, white still has the queen's pawn on her mind. Now the queen's pawn is no longer protected by the knight. Black responds by simply taking white's bishop. And since the bishop and the knight are of equal value, neither side has lost in the foregoing exchange. White is overly concerned about capturing black's queen's pawn to her own demise. Now that the protection is gone, she sees no harm in taking Black's queen's pawn with her own queen. But White is making the mistake of ignoring Black's intentions. And now Black takes her bishop to capture White's knight, putting her in check. The bishop has removed the protection of White's queen. White has no time to save her queen and she must get out of check. Hence. She resigns. Did you find the ending of this confusing? If so, keep watching. We're going to play the rest of this out. Obviously, the king can get out of check, and that's not the reason why white resigned. The reason white resigned is because of the inevitable loss of her queen, which would have 
put her at a great disadvantage, such that continuing the game was not worth it. So let's continue, and you'll see. The next move would be for White to move out of check. Easy enough. But at that point, she has no chance of saving her queen at all, and so Black would take her queen in short order. At that point, if you count up the number of points lost, Black is at such an advantage that White has no chance of winning at all. Resignation in a situation like this is a very common way that games end.